Corridor Digital just made the most impressive advance that I've ever seen in transforming live action animation into a legit animated film. And yet, some people see this as a mistake. <laughs> if we take the comment from the video itself, um, first of all, let me just give some background here. They created an anime version of Rock, Paper, Scissors, and it was epic. Um, and Corridor Digital's been doing CGI work for years. They deserve <laughs> whatever they get out of this. That's my belief. So I said, game changer. Thanks for all your hard work, guys. And somebody else, an hour later, says, art isn't a game. It's for everyone to do if they have a passion for it. This is stealing others' passion to make a soulless product, a quick buck. So what exactly is making a quick buck here? The idea is that after hours and hours of uh, figuring out how to uh, <laughs> convert a live action film into an anime, Corridor Digital created an anime. And probably uh, maybe 5%, 10% of the time it would take uh, for a much larger team to do the same work, potentially, right? The idea is they used AI to take one piece of art, live action, and convert it into something completely different and completely uh, more engaging and entertaining for all of us, okay? And <laughs> so my initial response to this commenter, um, and I may not be in the, <laughs> in the norm here, it seems that more people liked this other person's comment than my comment, um, <laughs> but I said, Corridor Digital just made something really beautiful and entertaining. Does art really have to take an entire production team and, extraor and an extraordinary budget to produce? Okay, think about it for a second. That's, I mean, why does art have to take so much time, resources? Why can't I put a prompt in and take my creativity that I see in my head and make a movie out of it almost immediately, okay? That's my question, coming in with that. My response to art isn't a game, it's only for those who have a passion for it. First of all, don't ever tell me that Corridor Digital isn't passionate about their work. They're very passionate about their work. They've been doing CGI and different types of animation for years. Um, so if you're calling this a quick buck, it wasn't. They have years and years of experience uh, working with animation. And uh, I think they're seeing the potential in AI art and taking their um, pre-existing art skills and applying it to um, a new media, a new form, right? The other thing is people make art all the time and they're not passionate about it. Um, there are people who make art for a living and they go into work every day and they work for Treyarch or Nickelodeon Studios and they come in and aren't enjoying it. And there are some that do come and do enjoy it. But on both sides, there are people who aren't always passionate about what they do. It's just what they ended up doing because they had some skills in the first place, right? Um, <laughs> and lastly, if you're passionate about something, what did that take the form of play? more than work? Wouldn't that make art a game? Uh, it should be fun for people to make new things and to do it easily, right? A child drawing on a poster with a crayon, showing it to their parents when they get home from school. Is that not art? <laughs> That's art. It was really easy to make, and the, but the kid is proud of it, right? Um, and if it's entertaining for people, if you've just prove to one million people that you can make an amazing animation <laughs> out of something and just create something spectacular like that, then um, why should that not be fun and, and rewarded, right? Uh, so the next comment was, this is stealing. What are we stealing here? Views? Entertainment value? Um, what's the real difference between someone spending several thousands of dollars for artists to make the same product that AI can now make, right? I have a budget of $600,000. I hire a team. 
I create a rock, paper, scissors anime, maybe I'm getting the same amount of money that I could with a five-person team that's really, really knowledgeable about CGI and art and uh, is just using AI to make their production speed faster. So who are we stealing from? Who are the artists that we're stealing from? Okay. And you call it a quick buck. I can also assure you that Corridor Digital did not make this in one day. <laughs> a quick buck it might become, but at least for this project that we saw here, um, you can tell the video took hours of work and they had to configure the AI to work correctly. And even after it was done, they had to configure it again and again. <laughs> they, uh, they had to refine their process. So is it not art or just a quick buck because they maybe got it out faster than they would have if it were done traditionally? I don't know. Personally, I think um, if you can minimize the amount of work you're doing to create the same quality product that you would create with hours and hours of work, why not go for that? Because at the end of the day, we do live in a society where we have to earn money to make a living. And if you are not following the trends of what art is popular and what art is entertaining to people and what people see value in, then your art is not worth as much, potentially. But maybe that's, maybe saying art isn't worth much um, can irritate people. But the thing is, um, at the end of the day, humanity will cease to exist at some point. So what is art or what should art be other than producing something that you feel exhibits something else, produces an emotion, gets a reaction, right? That's potentially an art. Um, and if someone's doing it better than you by using a tool, then why shouldn't they get more out of it, right? If everything at the end of the day will cease to exist, did it really matter whose art got more money? Or, you know, did the starving artist starve because they weren't able to uh, create as amazing of art in the same amount of time, right? <laughs> and um, that's the thing, you know, you have to adapt to trends. And the world is clearly changing. This is a game changer uh, as far as technology goes. And by the end of this year, we'll probably see great advancements in AI animation. So are you going to accept it or are you going to continue rejecting it? The same could probably be said for a ballpoint pen versus a feather in ink. Somebody who did calligraphy and people still do calligraphy. People are still going to do regular animation, right? But calligraphy, people used feathers and ink. Beautiful. They made wonderful art back then. <laughs> and uh, on sometimes papyrus or pre <laughs> ancestors to the, the piece of paper that we know today. But um, are you complaining that you have pieces of paper and that you had to go into class and had a ballpoint pen to write with and everything? Or are you just accepting it because the times changed and people adapted to that and so the art changed, right? Um, <laughs> the I guess what I could say for that is calligraphy may have died a little bit because of that. Um, but there are still people who appreciate it, for sure. There are also people who appreciate drawings done in completely ballpoint pen, ink, right? Um, and what does it matter if you appreciate one or the other? The person who was doing the calligraphy and uh, potentially lost their job and had to go into something else, is that... Is that stealing? <laughs> Did somebody steal that art away from them? No, they can still do the art. They still have the talent. They could learn the new art, right, and adapt. Or they can realize that art and its value changes over time, that um, new technologies come in that <laughs> supersede. <laughs> you know, they... they, they trump everything before it 
And this is what's happening right now. There's an AI revolution going on. And so if you sit there and say, oh, I don't accept AI art, it's causing all of these other artists to go, like, it to not be able to make money. Okay, well, um, in 200 years from now, I really hope that your grandchildren will be accepting of AI art because um, it will be an art form. And not to say, again, that animators who do it the traditional way will cease to exist, right? Um, for instance, if you look at the way that Cuphead was done and that those frames were drawn in the Disney style of animation, you could have said the Disney style of animation was completely lost. You could have said, <laughs> what's happening to animation? All we get right now is uh, Peter Griffin and all of his animation is outsourced to uh, some country in Asia where they take all the in-between frames and do all the rest of the animation. And that's totally speeding up the work. We can't have that, right? How, why, why are we doing this? Oh, because it's saving people money, right? And it's entertaining people faster, okay? So it's getting people a something that they think is valuable, right? A television show or an animation faster. Now, what's wrong with that? A high quality animation coming out faster. As someone on the other side of the screen, you should be happy because once uh, Nickelodeon and Disney and all these other animation studios get a hold of this AI technology, they will be able to take their skills and their abilities and create animations that we love much faster. And because we live in a capitalist society, uh, we will probably also have competitors rise up and say, oh, Disney, you made this, we made this, and it only took two people and 10 hours, <laughs> right? So um, in a sense, I believe that this is not a quick buck as much as it is just the next progression of art, right? Uh, what will become, what is a quick buck right now will always become something that people are still competing around. And, uh, you know, capitalist society that we live in, you know, nothing will become quick anymore until the next iteration, right? Once everybody's in the AI art, okay, cool. We're going to merge what we already know with what can be done with AI, and everybody will be doing it. There will be competition. Um, so I think that's there's something to be said there, right? Uh, it will be enjoyable. And I think for creators like me and everybody else who on a random day is sitting in their chair at home and they say, you know, this would be a really cool idea for an anime. <laughs> and then you call your best friend and you say, hey, um, what do you think about this idea for an anime? And you talk it out for an hour. And then at the end of that hour, you go, well, shit, if only we had like thousands of dollars to spend on an animation team to create this. Well, now we don't have to do that. Now I can take my uh, my idea for a dude who has like portals in his body and can like, you know, produce weapons from them. I think that's a super cool fucking idea. Now I can take that idea and say to an AI, hey, make this guy have a showdown with this other dude, this other superhero. And, um, you know put it on a planet full of dinosaurs or something, you know? So I, I don't see what's wrong with that. I don't see how it's stealing. And honestly, at the end of the day, whatever's a quick buck right now, eventually will have a rise in competition and it won't be a quick buck anymore. Um, we should also take a look at um, Two Minute Papers recently produced a video called Google's New AI. The age of AI made movies is here. Um, whenever two minute papers makes a video, you should listen <laughs> and ask yourself, what does this bring to the creative world? What, what does this equip us with? All right. And what, we, what he was showing in that video was the, uh, opposite of animation. It was live action sequences produced by AI. So not only are we getting animation videos soon, we're getting AI for live action as well. And um, 
I don't think that's something to be scared about or for artists to think is, is something to fear. I think they should look and say, hey, I have skills that I've developed. What can I do to adapt to this new world? What can, <laughs> what can I do? Right? How can I still bring my creativity, my art, and adapt in order to survive as an artist, to produce something, to get it out there? Right? And at the end of the day, I'm not saying that a traditional artist, one who decides to not go with this, uh, doesn't deserve the money and the attention. But they could probably consider using their skills to develop to inform how they would go about learning and using the AI art to uh, become a new type of artist and one that gets paid for it, potentially, so that they can continue doing it. Um, and again, <laughs> uh, AI art won't be everything. If we look 500 years in the future, I'm not a futurist. I mean, I am a futurist, <laughs> but I don't. I can't predict the future entirely. Uh, but my thought is there will always be people who will appreciate the fact that the art came from a person more than it coming from a bot, right? There will always be those people who comment, this is real art, you know? <laughs> And um, we have only to look at, say, calligraphy and other mediums like that uh, <laughs> and just say, yeah, uh, this is still beautiful. This is still something I can appreciate in this lifetime and, and look at and gain uh, respect for. It's aesthetic, right? Um, so that'll still exist. Um, kudos to the Corridor Digital team on doing a fantastic job with their animation. I can't wait to see more of it. Thank you for listening. If you're around still, like, comment, subscribe. I've just monetized my channel. I'm excited to bring new videos and content to you. Um, and there you go.